Washers try to make it four in a row and continue their steady climb in the Eastern Mass rankings, but it won't be easy as one of the powers of Central Mass visits Marciano Stadium. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Tim Cox. No let up in the schedule once again. The Boxers facing the 3-0 Red Raiders of Fitchburg, one of the perennial powers, and a, a team that gave the Boxers a tough time up in Central Mass last year. Steve Valley, as a bonus today, one of the better teams in Central Mass and one of the better athletes in the state this year. Absolutely. Z Zach McCall, he had a fairly good game last year, but he wasn't 100%. He had a knee problem last year. Looking at him out in the field today, his left ankle is taped like a cast. The coaching staff says he's 100%. When a, when a player is taped like that, you're not 100%. Doesn't seem to be affecting him, though, this year. After three games, he's got nearly 400 yards. So it should be the classic matchup. Power football again. It seems the past three weeks we've had nothing but run, 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 and hopefully we'll see it again today. Another big test for the Boxer defense. Keep your eyes on number one in white today. We'll have all the action for you coming up in just a minute. If it's going to happen for you, it's because you make it happen. Radio check, one, two, three, triple six, seven miles northeast with the cardiac. The answer could be an Air Force ROTC scholarship. You'll get an education and the training to become an Air Force officer. With an Air Force ROTC scholarship, you can go as far as your talent and drive take you. Aim high, Air Force. Boxers make their way out onto the Marciano Stadium field. Looking for their fourth in a row. Three straight after their opening day loss to Susan E. Wagner High School of New York and uh, a completely different team since that first game. Meanwhile, Fitchburg has played just three and they've won them all and uh, really without much difficulty. This is now, a good football team. They haven't had that tough of a schedule. 38 21 over Marlboro, 14 to zip over Milton. When you talk about Milton, you talk about the past, how we long went there. I mean, they're a football powerhouse. This year they started out 0-3, and last week 42 to 13 over Shrewsbury, who's no powerhouse. So they've had it easy, but they ha they haven't lost, so they don't know how to lose right now, and that's very important. Also, the defending Central Mass Division One Super Bowl champions, and the captains out at the center of the field, Lucian Belanger, of course, for the boxers, and the four captains for Fitchburg. Let's listen in. Good ball game. The clock here is official. All right. I have been approved and assigned by the commission and the clock is official. You're the visiting team. Who is making the call? In the air. If I drop it, we'll call it as she hits. In the air, please. As it is. Calls ahead. Come up a tail. Your choice. We're going to take the ball. They're going to receive the football. You'll defend the goal line. Put your back around there. This way. Okay. They're going to receive this way. All right, guys. Good half. Keep it going. That first time in a while, the boxers have won the toss. Took the words right out of my mouth. I was kind of happy that we won there. You know, Tim, it's such an important game, and the only depressing thing about this is that Fitchburg has more fans here than Brockton. It really as, is. As, as a kid who grew up in Brockton and is used to the full side of, you know, the full, full stadium, this is very depressing. And to put it bluntly, I'm a little bit disgusted by by the lack of support that the city of Brockton is giving this high school football team. It's really sad. It is disappointing. We've had some great football games, uh, excellent teams coming here from out of state, now from Central Mass, Fitchburg. Uh, uh, some outstanding weather we've had, too. One rainy afternoon, but otherwise some great days, including this one. And uh, we'd love to see a bigger crowd out here to support the boxers. And uh, add a little bit to those uh, coffers. You can Absolutely. Always use the gate receipts to uh, keep things going. We'd that reminds us, however, of course, that the Cape Cod Cafe will be contributing to the Boxer Athletic Department coffers. $4 for every point scored by the Boxers from the Cape Cod Cafe going into the BHS Athletic Fund. And to date on the season, we have $352. And we'll try to build on that today. Also, we'll be picking the Cape Cod Cafe most valuable player. And as a special guest, Jim Jamulis, owner of the Cape Cod Cafe, will join us a little bit later on today. So the Boxers winning the toss. Lucian Belanger electing to receive, and Fitchburg will kick off from our left. Joe McCarthy, 89, will kick off. The Boxers with their familiar diamond receiving formation, and the kick will come in the direction of Mike Bourne. 
the near side at the five yard line, Bourne. No fake. And Mike gets back out to the 17 yard line before he's wrapped up, hit there by Ish Gelpi, among others. One of the few returners. He was a wide receiver last year. He's going to be playing some defense too this year. Taking a look at some of the uh, people you'll see on the field today, the boxers going with the lineup that they've stuck with since game two of the season. Brent Warren, Chris Plord, Psychos and Reardon all around Mike Gregory. Uh, and your backs will feature Lucian Belanger back there, of course. He's done the job on first down, uh, picking up first downs on short yardage situations. Mike Shaheen, there you're. Uh, backfield and your two tight ends, Bernard and Pina. First and 10 boxers at the 17, 11 minute quarters today. And the first handoff goes to Mike Bourne, finds a little hole and gets about four across the 20 before being pushed backwards by Torrance Graham, number 30. Uh, the defense of Fitchburg, as Steve mentioned, very few returning starters from the Super Bowl team last year. And taking a look at some of the people who will be out there for the Red Raiders. There's your front line, one of the captains, John Salila there at the right He's a defensive tackle, one of the few returners. Oh. And uh, the defensive back not featuring Zach McCall. Not a very big defensive line, and as the game goes on, Brockton's strength and size should overwhelm the Red Raiders. Absolutely, you've got a match up there of Brent Warren against a defensive end, goes about 185 pounds, so Brent has a big size advantage there. Boxer's able to get only a couple of more back out to the 25 on the carry by Belanger, so they're still about two yards short of the first down. Here, we're gonna see a look at Fitchburg's backfield. There's big number, number one, one, Zach McCall, is the guy to watch, uh, particularly on offense. Another captain there, Bob Williams, and uh, Ish Gelpi, one of the few returners you know, for this Fitchburg the team. The Red Raiders, according to sources, are the number two rated team in, in the state behind Severian. So we talk about schedules, Every week we say there's definitely no weak sisters in the boxers lineup. This has this been one of the best schedules we've seen in years. Third down and two for the boxers from their 25. The call, Mosley, the fullback, and he won't get there. Just across the line of scrimmage is wrapped up by the center of that Fitchburg line, led by Captain John Salila. Also in on the stop for the Red Raiders, George Bishop, the left tackle. So a uh, three and out situation for the boxers, forced to punt on their first possession. Good work by the Red Raider defense. Sure, that's exactly how Fitchburg wanted to open up. Nice defense. John Salil is a name we're going to be calling all game long. He had a great game last year, and I expect the same this year. Torrance Graham, number three, and number five is Gelpi. They'll be receiving the kick from Jay, uh, sorry, <laughs> Alan Bercy. Freudian slip, Jay's younger brother, Alan. Doing the kick and gets a good high kick, but fairly short. Gelpi catches it and is immediately hit by Larry Stroud at midfield. And Stroud then exchanges shoves with James McCall, but uh, nothing comes of it. So Fitchburg, good field position on their first possession, and the uh, visiting fans trying to get behind him right away. We overheard a couple of Fitchburg fans in the pregame yelling out to Zach McCall, hey, number one, it's showtime. Well, let's hope the curtain falls the first quarter. <laughs> This is, uh, as Steve has mentioned repeatedly in the past, this is a, a team that uh, frequently gets the best out of its opponents. The uh, Boxers sure expect to see uh, a fired up Fitchburg team today. McCall in the backfield, number one, along with uh, number two, Bob Williams. Simple enough, and it's McCall right away for five, close to six across the 45 for Sampieri and Belanger. Let's take a look at the offense for the Fitchburg Red Raiders. There's your front line, Souza, Harris, Thomas, Ramo, and Salila, the big man at 255. Not a lot at the of right size. tackle. And uh, your receiving core and offensive backfield led by Mike Bolak, number 41, Williams and McCall, Chris Gallagher, and Ish Gelpi uh, are your wide receivers. So it is a gain of about five. Second down and five to go from the 45 of Brockton. This is a running offense. When you have a guy like McCall, you uh, expect to run. Intended for Williams, and the Boxers lose an opportunity. They may still get it. There's a big Still no pile signal. Up. It appeared Patrick Velios had the best shot at it, but it slipped away from him, you see. And the Boxers come up with it after all. Craig Bernard has it. That's right. How many times have we seen Craig Bernard in the offensive backfield wreaking havoc? He's got three hurry-ups on the quarterback this year, four deflections of a quarterback pass. And watch this right here. It's to Williams. Nice play action right there. It's going away from us, but Bernard caused that. That's he right. caused it. He hurried up Bolak, and Brockton 
with the big first break of today's game. Bernard has been the uh, soothsayer, the uh, absolutely uh, psychic one when it comes to running the uh, option. He's always there, and this time he forces the bad pitch. The boxers take over as Bernard recovers the fumble. Mike Bourne from the 46, trying to break into the open. Two men to beat, gets by Williams, and now it's McCall, Bourne at the three. Well, forget about three and out this time. Michael Bourne showing the moves to go with the speed and almost outrunning the two fastest men on this Fitchburg defense. Well, it's tough for a big kid. You see Mike Bourne, he runs low to the ground. He can cut on a dime. It's the first time we see Mike Bourne in the open and he did cut. Usually he likes to go straight out. Didn't have it. This time he did it. Great, great play for Brockton. 43 yards on the carry. First and goal from the three. And it will be Belanger. Close, but not quite. Just short of the goal line, and it'll be second and goal from there for the boxers. 43 yards for Mike Bourne, set up by the fumble recovery of Craig Bernard. And the boxers knocking on the door very early here. Mike Bourne so far before today, 67 rushes, 439 yards. 6.6 .6 average. It's a 5.3 average for every offensive play. Two rushes today, 47 yards. Less than a yard to go. Long count, Shaheen keeps a touchdown. Same play we saw last week after Mike Shaheen had the big pass to Pat Velios. Gonna take it in himself, that's all. You know, after the first series, a lot, saw a lot of faces over here. Brockton fans on the away side, you know, they said, hey, we haven't seen this in a while. Three and out. Doesn't matter. Brockton just keep on pounding at you. The Fitchburg fans silenced by the fumble recovered by Bernard. And then the big run by Bourne setting up the Mike Shaheen touchdown. Alan Bercy to attempt the extra point as Jason Mosley hustles in to be the 11th man on that line, the kick is up and good. And the Boxers open up a 7-0 lead, just three minutes, uh, sorry, four minutes and 20 seconds into this one, set up by the fumble recovery. That, of course, means 28 more dollars to go into the Cape, to the uh, Boxer Athletic Fund, courtesy of Cape Cod Cafe, <laughs> and they're bringing our season total to $380. Let's take another look at the nothing, Shaheen touchdown. Nothing surprising right here. In fact, I was going to say it during the, the delay, Watch for Shaheen right in, right behind Mike Gregory. Mike Gregory doing a great job, as is the Brockton offensive line on that series. How about Mike Bourne, though? It's the first time we've really seen him use his mobility. Usually it's just straight ahead, put the fuel on, and bingo, he's downfield. This time he's cutting left and right. Very impressive run by the little rocket man. Well... I mean, we talk about Zach McCall. He's gotten attention from Miami, from Syracuse, some big, big Division I schools for his running. And Mike Bourne has more yardage this year. Exactly, exactly. Well, but Brockton's offense... Played an extra game, but... Uh, as I was mentioning, Tim, they're averaging 5.3 yards for every offensive play. That means every play is five yards. That's, that's unheard of. Two, two uh, plays for a first exactly. down is all you that's need. That's unheard of. So the Boxers, to kick off for the first time, Bercy... Looking back at McCall and Graham, but elects to kick it short. It is touched, and it appears Fitchburg that uh, Fitchburg was able to gobble it up. It looked like Philippe Feliciano. I'd like to see a replay. I'm not sure if the ball fell off the tee right there. No, 42, Gary Jackson recovering the ball after it was touched by an up lineman. A little surprise sure. for the Red Raiders. Alan Bercy looks very unorthodox kicking off anyhow because he's got those long legs. I'm not sure if the ball might have fell off the tee. I don't know. Didn't fall off the tee is the word from the production truck. Let's see what Brockton's defense can do now. So Fitchburg, which gave the ball away on second down in their first possession, tries again with McCall and Williams in the backfield. And it is McCall on the deep pitch. Gets a good block from Williams, but fighting off that block is Jason Mosley, and with help from Belanger, McCall gets nowhere. You know, in speaking to Ray Cosenza, the Fishburg head coach, very impressed with Brockton. He was here last week against St. John. Not much of a passing game, but he felt he might be forced to pass today, and Mike Bolak hasn't got a lot of experience passing, so that, that might be interesting. 
Brockton's defense is just a swarming defense. Mike Bolak, 41, you're looking at there is uh, from the Tom Colombo mold. Absolutely. Physically. Goes, I don't know about uh, athletic-wise. <laughs> he goes 5'8", 155, but as Steve said, it hasn't had a lot of uh, opportunity to throw the ball. He may have to today if uh, Fitchburg gets behind. McCall trying to get around one man, does. And now hits for the sidelines, written out of bounds by Picard Jacques. Nice run. McCall showing the speed and the talent that has every major Division I college interested in him. Able to get outside. Got a nice block downfield on Troy Semper. I'm not sure who, who laid it out. Now watch him cut outside. Uses a little straight arm on Kenny, Kenny Legault, Legault. And gets around the corner before Jacques runs him out of bounds, but it's a first down on the carry. Picard Jacques, 17 tackles on the air, nine unassisted, eight assisted. <laughs> and there's Troy Semper up there. Curtis Bailey first. almost got it there. First down for the and Red Raiders. And he's a rock himself. <laughs> I'd get out of Curtis's way <laughs> in that situation. Our sideline cameraman. McCall again to the right side, hit quickly by Landers and Mosley gets about two. There's a nice size difference. Mike, Mike Landers and Zach McCall. You won't see Mike Landers backing down though. McCall the senior at 6'2", 210 pounds. As Steve mentioned, he was not really 100% when these teams met up in Fitchburg last year. He hadn't practiced. Yeah, he didn't practice. He was a little gimpy. And from Ray Cosenza again, got a lot of pressure on him this year with the colleges and national exposure and he's, his head's really not clear and that's a lot for a young man to, to take. I mean, you look at Rudy Harris, what he went through his senior year also. So gain of three, second and seven from the 37. Pittsburgh trailing by seven and it's McCall behind the block. Of oh, we got a flag clip. down on the left side. McCall sticking the ball out right in the face of Picard Jacques who brings him down but the whole play Ish, will probably be coming back. Ish Gelpi number five clear as daylight that's something you do in the interior line you might get away with it you don't do it in the wide open. And it is the penalty on Fitchburg so McCall's first down run will come back. Very impressed though Tim they're able to get outside on Brockton. Brockton is sending in the end in the cornerback, they're getting pressure, but McCall's got the speed, and Bolak's got that pitch down perfect, although he made one mistake earlier. Well, we talked about the size difference. The boxer defensive line clearly has a size advantage. You're looking speed. at the, those ends with Persampieri at 265 and Warren at 295, but uh, when you have a ball carrier like Zach McCall, you need a little quickness out there. Uh, to uh, run him down. See, so far he's been able to get the yard. That's something we've seen in the past. You look at a Walpole who doesn't have size to match up with Brockton. At the high school level, you can you can get away with speed instead of size. You've seen many teams because no team's as big as Brockton. Pittsburgh back on their own side of the field at their own 49-yard line. Second and 21 to go after the penalty. McCall hit by Patrick Velios and then Mosley lunging forward for four yards. Warren in on that one too. Nice play by Velio. Stayed at home, played off his block, got his legs, but it took a couple of other black shirts to get him down. He's a horse. He's, you have to go low on a runner like Zach McCall. You have to. An outstanding basketball player as well, uh, barring uh, injury or other unforeseen circumstances. You know, he's certain to become Fitchburg's all-time leading scorer this winter. Word is that he is a better basketball recruit than he is a football recruit, and he still hasn't made up his mind <laughs> what he's going to play in college. He and certainly can't play both. Well, he's talked about the idea of playing both, but uh, we'll see. Third down, 17 to go, and Zach McCall gets the ball. He'll uh, get about to the 40-yard line, just short of the 40, well short of the first down, about 10 yards. Back to so, the original. So uh, Fitchburg keeping it on the ground and uh, unable to get the first down yardage. So that tells us something. Even faced with the third and 17, they won't put the ball up. Well, again, we see a lot of teams do that. You figure it's a passing situation. You try the old drop play. Brockton didn't fall for it. Very rarely does it work, but we have seen it work for Brockton this year. See the Fitchburg punter for the first time. Nice kick. It is Bob Williams, who struggled in pregame. This time he gets a pretty good one off. Patrick Velios did a left and then a right and then got about two yards to the 12-yard line. Tried his tightrope walking act there. Let's see if our statistician Leo Genitasio has that. If, if I'm not mistaken, McCall has carried the ball on every play. Is that right? Six. Six times for well, 33 yards. 
Yeah. But uh, we, we also had the penalty. Uh, remember the fumble, in there. though. That that was to Williams. So that's that, what, that was that the one play that yeah. he did not carry it. And that's when they turned it over. Exactly. You can see why they've kept it in his hands. So he's averaging about five, five, five point oh one yards a carry. Very, very respectable. About three minutes to play. First quarter. Boxers leading seven to nothing, but at their own 11 yard line now. And Mike Bourne behind Belanger out to the 15. Nice job of closing up that hole by Fitchburg on the right side of that defense. Very nice job because when Bourne got that ball, he had a lot of green real estate in front of him. Aaron Reed. Tom Wade, number 53. Stuff. He's one of the captains. Fond memories of our matchup with Fitchburg last year. Another one of those pleasant fun central time. mass nights. That was uh, a fun time. Friday night, nice weather and a uh, good crowd. They get a big crowd up there. A less Friday intense night games. crowd, though. <laughs> then Lemonster, yes. <laughs> Shaheen gets nailed as he gets rid of the ball to Bourne, and then Bourne is wrapped up quickly by Torrance Graham. And Shaheen is slow to get up. He got his bell rung. Bob Williams and Jeff Caputi in on the tackle. Jeff Caputi, Bob Williams got to Bourne, but I wasn't quite sure who it was that nailed Shaheen. Might have to take the helmet off. He's doing a little personal maintenance as he chats with Coach Colombo. Every time I see a Brockton quarterback get hit, it reminds me of St. John's last year with Mark Hartzell. And that's when Mike Shaheen saw his first action. I'm sure he'd like to forget about that. I'm sure too. he would. <laughs> Third down, four to go for the first down from the 17. Shaheen, the pitch to Bourne. After and he may make something, he won't. Good work by Bob Williams, pushing Jason Mosley back into the backfield and closing the gap for Bourne, who appears to be a little bit shaken up as well. Looks like he twisted an ankle, he should be all right. Nice defense, beautiful defense. Watch the block, Jason Mosley blocking on the right side of your screen on number two, Bob Williams, and because Williams is able to push well, well, we followed the we wrong followed player the, there. Here's, here's Williams coming up on Mosley. Actually, it was not Williams. It was 32, 32. Ryan Keenan who held up Mosley and uh, allowed Williams and Graham and Gelpi to get to Bourne. So the fourth down and six brings on Alan Bercy to punt, and it should be good field position for the Red Raiders once again. They'll set up for the return. The wind got that one. And the wind will bring it down. Grabbed by Belanger inside the Brockton 40. So it will be good field position for Zach McCall and company to try to get this one evened up in the final half minute of the first quarter. Again, quarters flying by with this running. Let's hope the rain holds off. We saw sunlight for about, about an hour before the game started, then it clouded up. See those dark gray clouds. Let's just hope, let's hope it doesn't turn into a cathedral afternoon. It's threatening. A little bit windy too. Some uh, confusion on the Fitchburg offensive line, but everything in place now on what could be the final play of the first quarter. It is Williams on the carry. Bounces off the front of the line and then is ridden backwards. Mosley and Belanger there to stop Bobby Williams. See the strength no of Lucian Belanger? He was practically on his back and he still whipped around Williams. No gain, second and 10, and the clock running down to the final 10 seconds of the quarter. Watch, watch Belanger right here. On his back, still whips around Williams. That's Two points do it. for the takedown. And the whistle signals the end of the first quarter. The boxers capitalizing on the Craig Bernard fumble recovery, the 43 yard carry by Mike Bourne. And the Mike Shaheen touchdown gives them a seven nothing lead as we finish the first 11 minutes. Stay with us. The tragedy of child abuse takes many forms, from verbal assaults to hurtful blows. But it is preventable, and we all have a role to play. If you know of a parent having difficulty, reach out, sit down and talk. And if you're having difficulty, get help for yourself. Talk to a friend. Sign up for a parenting class. Take time out. Don't take it out on your child. Contact the National Committee for Prevention of Child Abuse. 
Statistics for the first half, Brockton on offense, Mike Bourne, five rushes, 53 yards. Jason Mosley, one rush, no yards. Belanger, two rushes, six yards. And Shaheen, one rush for one yard. On the other side of the ball, Zach McCall, very busy. Six rushes, 33 yards. Williams, that last run, one rush, no yards. And that's all we've had. Not too many offensive plays here. No, well, the boxers went three and out in their first possession. Punted the ball away. And on the second play from scrimmage, the errant pitch resulted in the Craig Bernard fumble recovery. Bourne scampered down inside the three-yard line on the very next play and uh, set up the short touchdown run by Shaheen. And uh, not much has happened since then. The biggest run that Fitchburg had was uh, called back due to a penalty. I love when that happens. <laughs> <laughs> We've seen it so many times on Brockton. Haven't had to beat on the officials yet either, Tim. Nothing so far. Second down and 10 from the Brockton 39-yard line. Fitchburg has yet to throw the ball. They're not likely to, though. McCall now goes out into the slot, and he'll be the intended receiver as this one is knocked down. There's that size issue. 5'8", 155 goes Mike Bolak, and he threw it right into the teeth of that big Brockton line. I don't know. Maybe Dan reared in there. I'm not sure who got him. It happened so look the, quick. Look at that helmet on Brent Warren. A little the, bit uh, in front of that crushed. <laughs> number 56 there has needs some serious body work. He likes it like that. Those linemen, it shows shows how many hits they're in on. Third and ten, passing situation. I'm not sure. Well, they send out Gallagher and Gelpie as your wideouts. McCall, may, maybe another draw play. Well, now they go side by side, McCall and Williams. Pro set and rolling left is Bolak, he's hit by Stroud. Just as he got rid of the ball, Mike Gallagher, apparently the intended receiver, though Torrance Graham, the tight end, was cutting underneath and, and uh, ended up between them. Incomplete, fourth down. Nowhere near a completion on that one. Mike Bolak just got his bell rung, too. He was a little bit itzy on the way up. Brockton defense coming up strong again, Tim. Their offense left them with, well, left Fitchburg with pretty good field position they weren't able to capitalize they weren't even able to get a yard the one no. running play and two incomplete passes and the boxers take a timeout with 10 53 to go uh in this second quarter leading by seven tim cox with steve valley glad you could join us for our third straight home affair at rocky marciano stadium this will be the last one for a couple of weeks as next week we uh, travel to westwood to meet up with the number one team in division one eastern mass Massachusetts as a whole, in fact. Uh, Zavarian has been nationally ranked since the preseason and have yet to lose, but they have not they been terribly done, impressive in their They victories. haven't done anything to defend their number one ranking. When they start, well, they're playing St. John's Shrewsbury this week, and the coach of St. John's is Tony Woods, a, a former Brockton resident. But word is that St. John's Shrewsbury is not the team of past years. Brockton scrimmages them every year, and I guess they're really, really bad in the quarterback position. Well, that'll be the matchup today. And then next Saturday in Westwood, hope you can make it out for that one. Uh, a chance for the boxers, providing they get through this one unscathed to lay claim to the number one ranking themselves. And that's all with the boxers and Hawks next week. The punt by Williams gets a good roll down near the 10 yard line. <laughs> Gallagher will chase it down there. The Boxers will be back deep again. Third time the Brockton's been pinned from their 15 on in. Both teams unable to generate any offense besides Mike Bourne's big run. Brockton, of course, coming into this game, ranked number four in Eastern Mass Division I after knocking off the team that had been number four, St. John's Prep. Prep slipped down to number eight, and the uh, top three have remained the same. None of them have lost any games, so Zavarian, Waltham, and Walpole. But you uh, look at a Waltham, the they play Somerville and Medford and just barely get by. BC High goes 3-0 and and jumps six spots. Brockton should be number one or two, in my mind. Waltham and Walpole will meet up later this season, so pro providing they remain undefeated, one of them will take a loss or worse to tie. Mosley able to pick up three yards before Graham and Williams hog tie him. You don't see too many, see that happen too many times. Jason Mosley, big, strong kid. 
Torrance Graham, the big number three, uh, took himself out of the play right here, the uh, linebacker seeking a little attention on the sidelines and was replaced out there by Jeff Caputi. Actually, Caputi is the starter, and Graham seeing some action spelling him, but now he's getting uh, some work on his hand, it appears. At any rate, second down five. Call it six, actually, from the 14-yard line. And nowhere to go as Belanger is met up quickly by that Fitchburg line. The pursuit has been there. George Bishop in there, nice play. There's Bishop, 64. Fitchburg's defense allowing virtually nothing for Brockton. Actually, both defenses allowing virtually nothing. Watch Graham is back here. in the lineup as we take another look at the uh, work oh, of this know if we're gonna defensive see it unit. Before the play gets off, here we go. Belanger, 35, met right away by Bishop and then getting help from Gary Jackson. So the third down five play. Shaheen to throw downfield for the first time, looking for Pina, and Pina collides with McCall, but wouldn't have been able to catch that ball anyway. Wow. Uncatchable, Zach McCall a great coverage too. Timed that perfectly. I'll tell you what, Z Zach McCall went to look down at Steve Pina, he thought it was a wide receiver, saw the size of Steve Pina and just <laughs> shut his mouth. 6'3", 235 for Pina. First attempt at some uh, downfield passing for the boxers. Incomplete. And uh, other than the Mike Bourne 43-yard carry, this offense really has been shut down by the Red Raider defense. And now they'll punt it away from their own 15. For Fitch, the third time, Fitchburg, Fitchburg should get the ball yeah. around midfield. Absolutely. If not better. Well, Bercy's with the win this time. High snap, but no rush as they set up for the return again. And Bercy gets off a good kick. Graham. Semper is on him, if he can hang on, and he does. Troy Semper, nice work. Well, we got a flag in the play, too. McCall went down. When a flag is thrown on a punt, it's usually the receiving team. Beautiful play by Semper. One of those, that's when you need those tearaway shirts. Looking for the white cap to make the call, let's see. Clipping on Fitchburg. We'll take that. 15-yard attempt, you know it. Back to inside the 35-yard line, and Fitchburg's field position will not be as good as expected. Hey, Semper kept them on their own side of the 50, but now the penalty will push them back to the 34-yard line. How about Alan Bercy? Let's let's thank the powers above that Alan's a tall kid because that was a high snap. He did a great job if, for If Pat Velios was back there, it's doubtful that he would have been able to grab that. Alan stands 6'2", 6 6'3", 6 and he had to jump up for that. Nice job, though. Beautiful punt. So with 9.02 to play in the half, the Pittsburgh offense still trying to get untracked. Two attempts at passing the ball have been incomplete. They've turned the ball over once, and the rest of the time it's been this man, McCall, who picks up about three to the 37, Craig Bernard on the stop. Both defenses are just dominating right now, just dominating. McCall, averaging better than 100 yards a game, has had to work for that yardage today. Bob Williams checks out. The receiver, Gallagher, comes in, so maybe a passing play for the Raiders. Change two for the Boxers. They set up for the pass as Psychos goes out, the extra defensive back coming in. That's uh, Kenny Legault. And the two, uh, three men in uh, pass formation as Bolak drops, throws to the right side. He's got Gallagher over there. Semper will ride him out of bounds, but it looks like Gallagher's got the first down yardage. Quick pass, good didn't, for the first down. Didn't get out of bounds because the clock is still rolling. Looked from our view that he was out of bounds. Again, the short little three-step drop. Very successful. Very tough play to stop. Gallagher all alone as the coverage had laid off a little bit. And it's a first down from the 46 yard line. Bolak up the middle for Williams. Who's there on top of him? Number 35, Belanger. And Psychos on the bottom. 
gate of about three. Gallagher now checking out, and James McCall making an appearance, number six in the Fitchburg lineup. He's a sophomore, and uh, haven't gotten the word officially, but I have to assume that uh, this is younger brother to Zachary. It could be. Doesn't have the size of his he's brother, but he's a, young still yet. Still a baby. He's 145 pounds, so he's just got to put on some beef on that 5'11 frame. Zachary McCall now getting about three for Sampieri. Bernard again, who's had a good day already. And the Red Raiders will be faced with a third down three situation, crossing into Brockton territory. And McCall looking a little bit gimpy after that carry. He's had knee problems in the past, ankle. I think he tore cartilage during the summer playing basketball, and his left ankle is taped. It almost looks like a cast when you're up close looking at it. You can even see it from this distance, the white on his left ankle. Third down about four. At the Brockton 48-yard line. Deep pitch to McCall. Trying to find a hole. Velios picks him up, but it appears that McCall will be very close to first down yardage. Patrick nice. Velios and Troy Semper. Nice pursuit. I figure you have to go for it here. They're going to take a look. Bring the chains all the way across to the uh, boxer sideline. As you look at Zach McCall, he had to get to the 44-yard line. He got picked up and just laid out. Nice defense. There's Patrick Velios coming into your picture, 26. Nice play, Pat Velios. There's Zach McCall, and here's the tape. That's a thick tape job right there, folks. A lot of extra support. We talk about his basketball prowess. He made the Boston shootout team, which of course is a, a pretty good honor. I mean, it takes the best around to uh, make that uh, shootout squad for the annual tournament against some of the best from around the country. But uh, McCall was saying, uh, was quoted in the newspaper recently as saying that they really hurt his basketball chances because he was not 100%. The leg problems were bothering him, slowed him down. He was not playing his best ball. And uh, so he didn't do an awful lot to impress the college scouts. Uh, and he thinks he would have been better off had he uh, not participated and let the ankle get some rest and wait up for this winter's basketball season. But he's uh, looking for the first down now, trying Big to keep play. this Fitchburg team undefeated. Fourth down one from the 45, less than a yard for the first down. And motion on the right side of the Fitchburg line will push them back to midfield and uh, change the strategy considerably. <laughs> I should think so. Long count, every fourth down play, long count. Well, you see a lot of teams do when it's so close. They're gonna, they're gonna take a timeout, a lot of them. They're gonna try to draw the defense off sides. Very long count. It has Bad to drive move. a coach nuts when you use the long count trying to draw off the defense Actually, and instead your line jumps. It was on the right side of the line. It was either Salila or Jamie Ramo. Ramo, too quick. And that brings on the punting unit, Williams from his own 40. A good, strong kick, Velios, making sure that everybody in the place saw the fair catch signal and left nothing to doubt as, you know, he we're gets seeing, it at the 17. We're seeing some great special teams work today. Beautiful punts on both sides of the field. And I watched Williams during pregame, and he was having trouble keeping the ball in bounds. But uh, so far, he's been impressive. As just Mr. Sun makes an appearance, just as we, we'd counted him out. Need my sunglasses now. Warm things up a bit. Let's hope it warms up the Brockton offense here. This will be the third time in a row the Boxers will start a drive inside the 20-yard line. They'll be at the 17. Here's the defensive coordinator for Fitchburg. I've yet to see Ray Casenza on camera yet. 5.15 to play, first half. The Boxers' only score coming on a one-yard lunge by Mike Shaheen, set up by a Mike Bourne 43-yard carry. Mosley in motion, pitch to Bourne. He's got some room out there behind Mosley. Nice and tackle. Picked up and put down by Williams, just short of first down yardage.
Williams on the stop, born nine yards on the carry. Watch this stick by Williams coming right into your face. Nice job of blocking by the Brockton backfield. Lucian Belanger, Mosley out there. Looking for somebody to hit. Williams found somebody right here. It's textbook. Dead in his track. Right at the knees. Nice tackle. Stops Bourne short of the first down. 62 yards now on the day for Michael. And it's the first down specialist, Belanger. Getting the first down and more out to the 35-yard line. It's the first time I've seen Lucian Belanger actually run east-west. He may have lost yardage at the end of that play, but a great, great offensive line movement. So it is a first down at the 35 and a timeout on the field with 4.19 to play in the first half. That works out perfect because we have a special guest here today, Jim Jamulis, owner of the Cape Cod Cafe. Jim, welcome to our broadcast studio here at the visiting side of Brockton Marciano Stadium. Well, thanks, Steve. It's great to be here today and this beautiful day that I ordered just for you. <laughs> oh, I broke up the rain just really? so we'd have a nice day today for the game. Well, uh, Jim, you sort of whipped out on us on Cathedral Prep. It was raining and we all know that you do melt. I do in, melt in the rain. In the rain. Yeah. Jim, uh, you're one of the few businesses around here. You're just a small businessman. You've been donating so much to the Brockton High School Athletic Fund. How did, how did that start for you? Well, it started when uh, the funding slowed down for the schools and sports were suffering. And, geez, you got to give the kids sports in school, you know, something to keep them going, something for them to do, you know, keep them off the streets, blah, 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 all that. So um, I decided to help out the high school. That's very nice. And, uh, would you like to see some other businesses in the city? I mean, we have some big businesses up the mall. We have Sears and other ones. You like to see them also jump into that? Well, I'm surprised somebody hasn't, others haven't jumped in the bandwagon and done something for the school. But I'm sure more businesses do things, you know, on, the, on their own too, and do other things differently. That's that's uh, for the school, you know. So maybe they do, and we don't hear about it as much. You know, you look around and see all the signs on the uh, in the fields, all these businesses advertising, and they pay to put those signs there. So sure. that's, in, that's funding for the uh, for the high school. I also see one from Cape Cod Cafe down there, too. Well, we do up, you know, we like to get out there, you know, and be a little visible. In fact, you might see a couple of them if you look around. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, this is coming from you. You obviously grew up in Brockton. Yes, you, I did. You're not even a Brockton resident anymore. And no, it's, but... It's, uh, very, it's very nice to see somebody that doesn't live in the city. I mean, I grew up in the city, too, but it's very nice to see somebody who's not in the city anymore supporting Brockton High School. Well, my heart's in the city. When somebody says, where are you from, I say I'm from Brockton, because <laughs> that's where I'm you from. You might run into trouble these <laughs> days with that, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> we just got through delivering pizzas to the um, football ba football boosters. We sell pizzas from the Cape Cod Cafe, and um, they sell them in the profits go to sure. the football team also. Sure, so you're helping on a couple ends. Of course, $4 a point. You ran near a, a thousand last year. You're well on your way this year. Well, I hope so. I'd like <laughs> to keep it up there a little bit. Sure. Brockton moving the ball very nicely, Tim. Michael Bourne on the carry, getting across midfield and picking up another Brockton first down at the 48-yard line of Pittsburgh, set up by the uh, nine-yard pass to Patrick Velios. Now Bourne checking out and Semper into the lineup on first and 10, just about three minutes to play. We'll have more with Jim Jamulis in just a moment. Shaheen to throw, has some time, looking downfield for Semper. Interference and all over it. Some contact, but the ball was thrown out of bounds. Now, I'm not sure Troy could have uh, kept his feet in had he gotten his hands on it, so it'll be incomplete in second and 10. Now, uh, Jim, were you an athlete in high school? No, I wasn't. You were just a pizza cook, right? I was right? just a pizza cook, right? <laughs> <laughs> You still do it, too. It's nice to go down to a business where a lot of business owners just sit out there and direct people. You're actually in the kitchen. Nice camera angle right here. Let's see if we have any contact before the ball arrived. I believe we're going to see a little. Actually, I don't think that ball was catchable, Tim. No, it was thrown out of bounds. It looked like it was overthrown. Yeah. Landers and Velios, the receivers now, as Bourne's back in there, and Michael gets the call. Wrapped up by Bishop. George Bishop. Bishop's playing like an archbishop tonight, I'll tell you. You're going to make him a cardinal in no time. <laughs> Maybe not in Brockton. Let him, let him do that in Fitchburg. 
So no gain, in fact, a loss of close to two yards will set up another passing situation for the boxers. Now, Jim, I just have one question. Okay. Where, where are our Greek salads for, for halftime? They're here? coming, they're, they're coming. coming. They're on order, especially for you, Steve. George Pinzino down the court said he makes them extra special for the broadcast crew up here. <laughs> <laughs> they're on their way. That's our favorite part of the day, halftime. We, we eat Greek salads in record time up here. <laughs> Three receivers in for the boxers. Third down, 11. Pressure on Shaheen, he drops way back and looking for somebody, nobody there but linemen. Reardon and Gregory were the closest to the ball as Shaheen got pushed all the way back inside his own 40. I'll tell you what, Dan Reardon's lucky he didn't get a flag on that because he was way downfield. And linemen aren't supposed to be that far downfield unless they're a receiver and I'm Almost sure he didn't notify the referee. Well, the what they're looking for, Tim, they're looking for the dump out screen play, but Fitchburg picked it up very nicely. We've seen that many times this year. Couple of minutes left. This is where Fitchburg really needs something to happen, to go in, into the locker room with something positive to build on for the second half. Now the Boxers able to pick up a couple of first downs, but he gets stalled at midfield in the final two minutes of the half, and uh, they'll give the ball away again. Mercy, another pretty good kick. Ish Gelpi at the 17 yard line. Sidesteps a couple of tacklers, but he didn't get far. Not far at all, Jim. Unable to get around 35, Lucian Belanger, who seems to be where the ball is. Virtually every play. Uh, Jim, how long how long have you been doing this points for uh, dollars for points here? This is the this is the fourth year. Do you do you know how much you've actually contributed? I mean, uh, do you keep no, track? No, I uh, don't. <laughs> I, I know it's in the out, thousands, no. though. It, it that's, is. That's a definite. It's come to about, I don't know, six, eight, I don't know, probably average six, eight, three, four thousand dollars, I guess, three thousand dollars so far. Now, for the previous years, you know, you never even let me look at the check. You don't let me touch it or anything. I'm, <laughs> no, I've you're going to keep your hands off it, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> you don't. He didn't become a successful businessman <laughs> for no good reason. <laughs> Zach McCall wrapped up after a gain of two. Belanger there, also Pat Patrick Belios, gain of two for the 19 as the clock winds down to 142. And a whistle blows as the boxers call a timeout, trying to stop Fitchburg deep in their own territory, maybe get the ball back in the final minute. Coming up at halftime, we'll have the boxer band, the uh, halftime dancers, color guard, majorettes, and they're a terrific show. And don't forget Fish that we'll be selecting the Cape Cod Cafe band, right? MVP. Jim, Jim Jamul is commenting on the size of the band. <laughs> a little bit bigger than yours than uh, when Jeez, you were at I guess they were. I don't even think we had a marching band <laughs> when I was in high school. They had a city band. I don't band. know if we had a high school when I was in high school. <laughs> well, they, that, the high school you went to is now the unknown school, correct? That's right. Yeah, we went to double sessions. It was sure. great getting out of school yeah, at 1230. Yeah, you were telling me about that. 10 past 12 that. or whatever it was. Could you imagine double sessions at, at, at this right now? I mean, you just you just can't see it. There, there is the plentiful Brockton High School marching band. The entourage getting ready over oh, there. Oh, that's a good Absolutely. description. Plentiful. Yeah, plentiful. Oh, we have a timeout. Let me uh, mention this coming up. Speaking of uh, Brockton Pride, the second annual Brockton Pride Night is uh, coming up shortly to uh, celebrate Brockton's cultural diversity. Uh, the VHS Jazz Band, under the direction of Vincent Macrina, will be uh, uh, performing along with guest soloist Dick Johnson. Everybody from Brockton knows who Dick Johnson is. I guess you know it's a nice day when the referees are in shorts, huh? <laughs> it's a good sign. That's uh, all coming up at Christos 2 on November the 6th. We'll tell you more about that as the, the uh, afternoon goes on. It's a uh, uh, good event uh, sponsored by the Boys and Girls Clubs of Brockton. All right, Jim, now what do you think they're going to do here, run? You got me. <laughs> no, they have to pass. They got to get downfield times running. Second and seven. They got the two wide receivers in. Two left and a half. But it will be McCall. Wrong. You're right, they're running. To the right side, Zach McCall. A few yards. For about five. You know, but Brockton has closed up that option play to the outside as the half progressed. Remember the first couple of times they ran it, Timmy? He got outside in that burst of speed. Brockton is looking for that now. They're not getting anything inside, so you know on big plays, they gotta go outside, and Brockton's not allowing it anymore. Boxers take another timeout, again trying to stall Fitchburg on the third and three. Oh, 
Jimmy, I'm glad you finally made it up here. You, yeah, uh, me too. You stood me up a few times, but you, your right. wife, your wife actually promised me that you, <laughs> that uh, you would be up here. I heard enough about it, Steve. <laughs> I had to come up, <laughs> and I'm glad I did. <laughs> and from what I see here, you got to go right to the card and cook some pizzas now. Well, that's true. Maybe the boosters gonna need some more pizzas. I hope. How many, how many pizzas do you actually deliver up here? I, uh, just 120 so far today. Just, just 120. Yeah, they think they might want some more, so that'd be nice. That's not bad. It'd be nice uh, if we got a few more boxer fans like out said, here to buy the, the profits pizzas. They, they go to the, bo the Boston, uh, the Brock, <laughs> the boxes. <laughs> actually, I think Boston could use the, uh, <laughs> yeah, right. the monetary uh, they could use help there, too. <laughs> Minute 25, and Timothy, as is our previous three weeks, it's taken about a half hour to play the full half, and another minute 25 <laughs> takes about another we're, half we're hour. We're playing basketball time. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Whip through the early going, and then the final two minutes are uh, timeout time. Okay, Steve, you're turn. It's third and two. What are they going to do? I see. you got to give it to McCall. Got to give it. Timothy? Yeah, they've been unable to throw the ball. They've completed one pass, a short uh, three-step drop. It picked up a first down, but uh, that's exactly what Brockman would be looking for in the passing situation. I think uh, Zach McCall is good for three yards here. Well, let's let's hope not. Hasn't really broken the big one. The only one he did break for any distance, a little over 10 yards, was called back in a holding call. 50 yards on 11 carries. So Brockman holding him in check so far. One twenty-five to play. Boxers leading seven to nothing. They scored in the first quarter. Mike Shaheen one-yard run, set up by a forty-three-yard carry by Michael Bourne. Uh, but it's been silent for both offenses ever since. Now Fitchburg trying to keep a drive alive at their own twenty-five. Third down, two. And it looked like people were moving a bit early in that backfield, but McCall gets the ball and the four yards he needed. Bernard and Belanger now you've on the stop. Now you got to think that, well, now somebody's calling timeout. Jimmy, I know you've got to go. Uh, Steve, I just got the word from the boosters they need more pizzas. They need more pizzas. So I'm, I'd, I'd like to stay and help you out for the rest of the game. <laughs> But uh, I got to I go. just I just want our salads. That's all, Jim. They're right? coming. They're coming. I make promise. sure we get them. Jim, it was very nice for you to come up here. And, well, it was uh, a pleasure. And very nice job with the Brockton High School Athletic Department, and you should be congratulated. And I hope other businesses in the city take your cue and actually get involved. Thanks, Steve. Thanks for having me up here. No problem, okay. Jim. We'll see you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right, Jim Jamulis of the Cape Cod Cafe. Thanks. Nice of you to stop by as we uh, continue the... Cape Cod Cafe Dollars for Points program. We're up to $380 on the season now, and uh, at this pace today, it'll s it'll stay that way a while. And I just saw who came up and grabbed him. It was Dina Porter, number 47, Adam Porter, just a sophomore running back. She's a waitress down the card, and she works for the Booster. She came up and said, Jim, get to work, pal. <laughs> Enough lounging around. No more slacking off in the, oh. this TV stuff. He's off to the court. Nice Fitchburg guy. taking this time out. Now that they picked up the first down, they'd like to make some uh, good use of the final minute 21 of the game. Not well, the half, I should say. To do that, Timothy, I think you're going to have to see them pass it. And I can't see Brockton giving up a big pass right here. You know Billy Devin just went in there. We'll give him the five and six yard runs, but no way are they to be lax in the pass defense. Well, they'll give them the five and six yard pass plays too if they want to take them. Yeah. But uh, anything downfield. Actually, I think maybe Tom, difficult. Tom Landry of the Dallas Cowboys had a term for that the prevent defense. I don't know what it prevented, but he called it the prevent defense. Certainly didn't prevent completions. First down 10, 29 yard line of Fitchburg. McCall, surprise, surprise. This time he'll get about five. Maybe six now as he stretches out under the grasp of Dan Reardon. No timeout. Clock running down to the final minute. They've been able to get outside for that five or six yard game, but they're looking to break that big one. Look at Pat Velio's play off the block. Got a hand in there. Dan Reardon with a nice leg tackle. Second down three. 
from the 36. Big hole. McCall for the first down. But uh, lots of traffic in front of him there as he crosses the 45-yard line. Why didn't he go outside, though? Not using his head in that play. He was on the sidelines. If he went outside, they wouldn't have had to waste a timeout. They do call a timeout with 38 seconds to play. That might be their third or fourth. I'm not sure. I haven't been counting. But he had the sidelines in view. After you make the cut, he cut inside. And that's where Brockton put him down. Still about so a yard away from the sidelines. And you see Picard Jock there preventing McCall from going outside. A judgment call. I think McCall thought he had a little gap there where he could have picked up some big yardage, but uh, it closed up in a hurry, and he went down. So it'll be uh, first and 10 from the 46 with 38 seconds to play. And McCall uh, adding on to those yardage totals in the uh, final couple of plays. Not too fancy, though. I mean, you know McCall's getting it. He's a workhorse. He'll, he must be tired after every game. You know, we've we've heard uh, off the record that uh, Zach McCall is a very confident young man. He's been known to do a little hot dog well, from time to time. Well, we saw him last year. And we've heard about that from uh, reports of other games. And he has a, a tendency to want to stick that ball in your face, runs with it out in his palm, and that can be dangerous, but so far, hasn't cost them. Now he's out on the slot on the first down play, and it is Williams getting the carry. Bob Williams, good for about six yards. I don't see a timeout, so they're going to just run oh, it out. Scramble back, no huddle. And the passing formation, I think they called two plays on that last uh, timeout. So they've got their receivers in there now, and the boxers take a timeout. I think Picard Jacques decided to blow the whistle and 16 seconds remaining in half number one. Seven to nothing, boxer lead. The defensive battle here at Marciano Stadium between the number four team in Eastern Mass and uh, the number one team in Central Mass, the Fitchburg Red Raiders. Two teams statewide. It's your classic matchup on the gridiron. Power football, power defensive football. Of course, they still play the Super Bowls in Central and Western Mass. And as we mentioned earlier, Fitchburg, the uh, Super Bowl champs in Division I Central Mass a year ago. They're always right up there with Lemonster in Northern Middlesex. Lemonster's having a bad year, though. They played last night. They started out one and two. I'm not sure how they did last night. Twenty-two to six, the final score, as Fitchburg defeated Northern Middlesex last year to cap off a ten and two season, which included the loss to Brockton, one of only two losses on the uh, on the season, and undefeated thus far in 1992. You know, one of Ray Cassenza's concerns was the inexperience on his offensive line, but when you have a back as good as McCall, you sort of make up with that. Williams, the lone setback again. And with time, Bolak caught. Gelpi. He got out, too. Nice play. Looked like Bourne had the interception there. Ish Gelpi beating Michael Bourne to the ball, getting a few extra yards on second effort down to the 16-yard line and out of bounds with nine seconds to play as the Red Raiders try to tie this one up. They'll have perhaps two shots, depending on their play selection. Coming right in your face. Watch Mike Bourne come up here. Bourne thought he had the ball. Gelpi, beautiful job to catch it and then to turn around on the sideline and get a few more yards. Kenny Legault riding him out of bounds, but uh, Gelpi, good presence of mind, picked up the few extra yards down to the 16 and now another time out on the field with nine seconds on the clock. You know, Tim, Fitchburg is yet to score a point against Brockton in almost a game and a half. You remember last year it was seven to nothing, and we're nine seconds away from halftime, and they've yet to put a point on the scoreboard.
40-yard pass to Ish Gelpi puts Fitchburg in striking distance. Time may not be on their side, though. Best scoring opportunity thus far for the Red Raiders, and you go back two plays to the carry by McCall when he did not get out of bounds. They were forced to Absolutely. use it. They may need that one before this half comes to an end. Here's the uh, response of the Fitchburg crowd on their feet and applauding, getting behind their Red Raiders as they try to make this one the uh, ball game. As they try to make this one the uh, ball game. Oh, it's already a ball game, Tim. Before we go to the locker room. Rockland's defense is bent at times. I haven't seen him break too often after that first game. Gallagher and Gelpi are wide receivers. McCall in the slot. Williams the lone setback. McCall goes in motion. Quick drop. Fake to the right. Pass to Gelpi in the end zone. Caught for the touchdown. Again, Brockton defensive backs are going for the ball. Mike Landers played the ball, was in great position to make the play, but Landers mistimed his jump, and that means six points for the Red Raiders, which is four ticks left on the clock. I, for one, did not think that would happen again as Gelpi went up behind good coverage. And two passes for 56 yards from Mike Bolak to Ish Gelpi, producing the points for Fitchburg in the final seconds of this half. Two drastic mistakes in the Brockton backfield. And we haven't seen those mistakes in a while. No, in this situation, you want to knock that ball down. Absolutely. Just keep it out of the hands of the receiver. Instead, Gelpi taking it away. First from Bohr, this time from Mike Landers. And Fitchburg with a decision as to one point or two. Looks like one, if I'm correct. I don't see Zach McCall in this, so it must be one. Yeah. 89, Joe McCarthy. McCarthy to attempt the kick to try to tie this one up with Re four remember, seconds on the clock. Fitchburg gets the ball first in the second half also. So they, as I mentioned, when they got the ball, they need something to build on. They can certainly build on a nice touchdown drive. So Ish Gelpi, the six foot 165 pound senior, one of the few returning starters with a touchdown and the point is blocked. Velios picks it up and heads up field. This would be a point should he get it back. He goes all the way to the left side. Patrick Velios finally dragged down at the 48 yard line. 78, Glenn, Glenn Cooper. Cooper saved the point. Now, last week we saw an interception on an extra point by Lucian Belanger, and that, remember, well, the clock didn't go. The clock should have went as soon as the ball went in play, I believe. No, on the extra point, I think the, uh, the clock stays still until the kickoff, so the boxers will get an offensive play with four seconds on the clock from their own 48-yard line. So. That makes Velios' play even wiser to go for all he could get, even knowing he couldn't get in the end zone, the better field position uh, for the boxers. It's a heck of a run back, wasn't it? He covered a lot of ground. <laughs> to the left, to the right, and the PATs. How important are PATs? Well, Fitchburg to kick it off now as Patrick Velios. Not sure who got a piece of the ball, it was a low point attempt and bounced straight up in the air for Velios who caught it in the end zone, ran it back 48 yards on a circuitous route. Now the boxers will get uh, four seconds with the clock to start as they touch the ball on the kickoff. Will Fitchburg kick it though? They might just nub it and let the clock run out. Remember the, the clock doesn't start until a Brockton player touches the ball. So Fitchburg plays it safe, goes for the tie, the one point, but they don't come up with it as it's blocked. And it is a squib kick. Ty A. Houston will down it at the 30-yard line. Clock ticked off two seconds. Shouldn't have ticked it off should not at all. Have. Shouldn't have ticked off at all. As it was downed by Houston right at the 30 as soon as he touched it. We're gonna see the touchdown, the pass to Gelpi here. Yeah, 
Here we go. Now watch Landers play the ball right here. Not a very good pass. Landers played the ball and mistimed his jump. It's as simple as that. Had great coverage. And a fine catch by Gelpe, his second of the drive. Makes it a one point ball game and the boxers get one shot from 70 yards away with three wide receivers, Landers, Semper is the intended receiver. Lucky that wasn't a lateral. <laughs> it hits the turf, and the clock ticks down as we finish the first half with a flourish. Fitchburg silent on offense throughout the first half, getting a passing game going on the final drive and getting their six points to make this a one-point ball game. We'll have the Brockton High School recall. Ooh, so they're, the they're, band, getting, yeah. uh, they're getting their message across. Let's take a look at the halftime numbers uh, in this seven to six ball game for uh, Fitchburg coming back in the final four seconds to make this one a one point game. And here's how they did it. They got uh, 148 the total air. yards now. It was 72 air. passing yards after very little happening on that front uh, most of the game. Basically even except for the passing right there. An evenly played game. And the boxers nine yards passing. Unable to get anything going through the air themselves. A line drive kick mishandled by Torrance Graham. He picks it up at the 22 and then has a gap. Spins and is dragged down at the 37. Fitchburg really hasn't started in bad field position all day. One thing they have going for him. So Graham juggles the ball and then makes something out of it. Jamal Mosley on the stop as the Red Raiders start out at the 38 yard line. Well, Zach McCall is certainly the workhorse of this offense, but Ish Gelpi, the receiver, and Mike Bolak, quarterback, out to prove in those final minutes of the first half that this is by no means a one-man operation. As the passing game set up the score, it's McCall on first down. Jason Persampieri, the stop after a gain of two. And when he gets a grip on you, you're not going anywhere. I don't care what running back he's in has the ball. See big number 7-0 in the black shirt. Just hangs on. So McCall, 68 yards thus far. 15 carries. On 15 carries. It's been a lot of work for him to get that yardage. Second down eight, McCall behind the block of Williams. Hit quickly at the 41, and then able to get out to the 43, so. Brent Warren in on that tackle. Big Brent. I'm sure a lot of teams run away from Brent Warren because they just see his unbelievable size. And it's very intimidating, especially for a small team like Fitchburg. It's like having a right fielder with a great arm. He doesn't get many <laughs> assists because no one dares exactly. to run on him. And Brent doesn't get his name called on the tackles as often as he might because people just stay away from him. So third down five situation for Fitchburg. They'll have to go back to the air perhaps. It worked for them in the final minutes of the first half. And Bolak looking for Gelpi. Got it. Ish Gelpi. Mike Landers is having problems with that coverage over there. I think he thought perhaps that Gelpi couldn't catch that ball, but good hands, good footwork. And Ish Gelpi with his third big reception of the afternoon. Here he Watch is right him. in front of you. Watch the catch right in the sideline. Beautiful grab. Incredible grab. Nice Really play. couldn't appreciate it the first time around. Obscured by the... Uh, players on the Fitchburg sidelines, but Gelpi, an outstanding catch, and he's definitely been the uh, catalyst of this Fitchburg offense. Now it's McCall, again, holding that ball out there, penalty marker down. In the interior of the line. The Bernard and Velios stopped the big man, and it appears it'll be a penalty against Fitchburg. It is holding. Oh yeah, you see it right there. The left guard, Dan Harris, number 50, had a hold of, well, it looked like Dan Reardon. So 
So that play will come back. It'll be second down ten, uh, 20. First down 20, sorry. Fitchburg looks actually, a lot better than they did the first three <laughs> quarters of the first half. The official marched off five yards too far and then came back upfield. It's a 10-yard penalty for holding. So Fitchburg back at their at the 46-yard line of Brockton. And they need to get to the 27. So somehow we ended up with just slightly less than first down and 20. We'll call it 19 to go for the first down from the 46-yard line. Two receivers. At the top of your screen, Gelpie and Gallagher. First time we've seen that set up, but it's McCall running to that side. Velios in pursuit, forces him outside. Belanger comes along and uh, stops McCall for a very little game. Nice defense right there. McCall tries to stiff arm his way upfield. Didn't work that time. Brockton's too powerful for that. Velios, good pursuit to force McCall to the sidelines. Bolak, very impressive on the pitches. He's only made one mistake early on, and it did cost him a touchdown, but after that, he settled right down. Watch Lucian Belanger get a hold of him, along with Picard, Jacques, Velios in there. Gang tackle. But it was Velios who made McCall go wide. The gain is just two, so that brings up second down, 17. Red Raiders trailing by one. Their extra point attempt on their lone touchdown was blocked and almost returned for a score by Velios. The reverse, Bernard was not fooled. And Bernard wraps up Gelpi, who falls forward for a gain of two, but they needed 17, so this one doesn't go far. That play had big gain all over it. Craig Bernard, fantastic presence of mind to stay home Wow. I'm telling you, Craig Bernard has been getting a hold of opponents' playbooks. He, he, he's, he got could, a, he's got I'm a source you. somewhere because he, he seems could. to know what's happening. He's been there game in, game out, wreaking havoc for the op opposition's yeah, offense. That had big gain all over it. There was a lot of open space there. Bernard, Velios was over there, but he was blocked out. Nice play. Faced with third and 14, the Red Raiders take their first time out of the second half. They'll talk this over. Well, you've got to think they got to go to the air. They've been very successful. Remember, at the conclusion of last week's game, Armand Colombo said we definitely have to work on our pass defense. So far, it's pu proved futile. If there's one weak point, well, not exactly weak, but if there's one downer on the Brockton defense, it is the pass defense. And teams, Zachary McCall. Teams are slowly but surely finding that out. McCall is an Ohio native, and his uh, uncle lived in Fitchburg. I guess uh, Zachary was in a sort of a tough neighborhood in Ohio, urban setting, and his uncle out here in Central Mass said, I got a nice place for you to live. <laughs> Bucolic little town. Sure. Lots of trees. Nice school system. Nice and uh, okay. convinced the McCall family to come east. And it's been a big payoff for Zachary. For both parties, really. I'm sure Fitchburg High is very gratified that they have big number one back there. Certainly the football and basketball coaching staffs are grateful to Zach's uncle. McCall up at the top of your screen, now going in motion on third and 14. Two wide receivers. And rolling left is Bolak. He will go down. Larry Stroud. If Stroud didn't get him, Belanger would have. If Belanger didn't get him, Landers would have. And if Landers didn't get him, Persampieri would have. They were all there. They blitzed just that a question one. Of who. Too many. Watch, watch the fake by Larry Stroud. He's, he's making like he's got pass coverage. Untouched. They just sent everyone. Bolak had no chance right there. And a good tackle by Stroud. Did not let Bolak get away. Big loss all the way back to the 48 of Fitchburg. Forcing Williams to punt. Another good one from Bob Williams. The boxers will let it bounce. Just getting out of the way is Velios, and it'll die at the 22. The boxers will start out outside that 20-yard line for a change, but still not great field position after another good punt by Bob Williams. 7-6 our score. The boxers hanging on since an early 
Mike Shaheen touchdown. They scored four minutes into this one after Mike Bourne ran 43 yards to set up the score. And the offense has been silent ever since. Pittsburgh's defense has risen to the occasion. Let's see what Armin Colombo tinkered with in the locker room. The passing game has not had much nine yards and even the rushing game 76 yards but 43 of that came on the one play for Bourne so take that away and you've got a pretty dismal first half offensive performance this is Bourne able to get out across the 25 Torrance Graham on the stop nice block along by Jason. with uh, Ishgelpi Jason Mosley lead blocker there we've had only one turnover in this one but it was a big one Craig Bernard forcing an errant pitch by quarterback Mike Bolak on the option and then settling under the uh, loose ball at fumble recovery. Gave the boxers the ball and set up the big carry by Bourne which produced the touchdown moments later by Shaheen. So the one turnover costly for the Red Raiders. Mosley, second effort, first down. That's what we're used to seeing every week. The second effort by Brockton's big bruising running backs, Belanger and Mosley. Soften them up with those two, then give it to Bourne and let them race to the end zone. John Salila, the big uh, lineman, 6'1", 255 senior, checks out of the defensive line for Pittsburgh. He's one of the captains he's replaced in there. Looks like 42, Gary Jackson has moved up into the line. He's a linebacker, but he's in there now for Salila. Shaheen, good fake, but now under pressure. Throws it up for Belanger and caught. Intercepted by Williams. Mike Shaheen had to rush that one because he had big time pressure. I think it was either Wade or George Bishop was right on his tail. It was Tom Wade coming from his right side. Good coverage on Belanger, and the ball was tipped into the hands of Bob Williams. Not a good pass, anyhow. There Let's you see, see who pressure. it is that gets a hand on it on the coverage. Behind Belanger. 32. And that's Ryan Keenan. Nice play. Keenan, the strong safety, just a junior, and he makes the play, getting it into the hands of Bob Williams. Fitchburg with the ball in Brockton territory. 5-12 to play, third quarter. They trail by a point. Two flags. Motion apparently the problem here as Gelpi is badly overthrown by Bolak. But you know, we saw the same thing last week with the St. John's backfield starting a little bit too early. Be it, it's only like a half a second, but they do start that early and it should be called. This time it's called. It's happened before today and it's been it's gone uncalled. There's Ray Cosenza with the headset there. So push Fitchburg back five yards. There's on, on the right-hand side, talking talking to his quarterback, Mike Bolak. In his fourth year, very successful program the past few years. And he's got a very successful program in the future, too. His JV team was very good last year. They're 2-0 this year. So. What used to be Lemonster's territory is slowly but surely spreading out to Lemonster, Fitchburg, and Northern Middlesex. Second down at the 43-yard line. McCall jumping into the arms of and a he defender. Landed, he landed on his feet. How's that for you? That's balance. Might have been Belanger as Warren was the first obstacle. Not going to jump over him. No, definitely not. <laughs> Lucian Belanger and Mike Landers. You should be running track if you can jump over Brent Warren. <laughs> I think credit for the stop. That's an Olympic height, Dave. Able to leap tall lineman <laughs> in a single bound. 6'6 six, six lineman at that. Clock running, 4.50 to play, third quarter, and a third down four situation for the Red Raiders. Gelpi and Gallagher. On the left side of the line, it is Gallagher, the intended receiver. Caught and nailed, but it's first down yardage as Semper makes well, the Well, let's stop. see where they mark it. I don't think it is first. No, they're not going to give it to him on this play. 
They might have to go for it on fourth down. They will have to go far. They're a couple yards yeah, short. They'll mark the ball at the 35-yard line as Gallagher went nowhere after catching the ball right there. Boom. Semper. Actually, that's a pretty good mark there. Will they go for it? I think so. They will. Fourth down one. Gelpi is in there. Gallagher is in there. The tight end, Graham. And once again, the Fitchburg fans trying to buy a couple of extra yards for the Red Raiders. Keeping it, Bolak tripped up but gets the yardage and gets outside. He stepped outside. He stepped he out of bounds. Whoa, they didn't call it though. Bolak, very impressive play. Fitchburg on the run again. Brockton. Brockton not a fired up boxer team right now at all. Watch how close Bolak comes to tight roping this one. As he tiptoes down the sidelines. Get a good view of it here. He slips the tackle of Bernard and decides to keep on, uh, hang on to it. No, he didn't step up. Very nice, close. Nice call Came by close the official. again there. And finally out of bounds at the 21-yard line. First and 10 from there. Fourth down carry by Bolak. Keeps the drive alive. McCall driving the legs. Belanger didn't and take Bernard. A step. Three-yard gain. Armand Colombo's got a very flat Brockton sideline right now. They need something to spark them. Well, I'm sure the Brockton athletic, uh, the Brockton uh, coaching staff, I should say, was much better informed about the Fitchburg defense than we were, but we certainly came in knowing that uh, Zach McCall was sure. a dangerous guy and that the offense might be uh, hard to contain, but we did not know that much about this Fitchburg defense. And that's what's kept the Red Raiders in the game. Now they're trying for the lead, 3-10 to play third quarter. Second down and five from the 16. Bolak to pass. Velios. Oh, that's a they got it. There they goes got the it. flag as it's caught Forget out of bounds it. by Gelpi. Dan Harris from, from the point of contact. That's a clip. That's a fifth. Oh, they're going to call it a holding. Should have been a clip and a legal block. The play will come back. Watch the center of your screen. Bolak dropping back and Velios breaks free from the block and Harris just trying to contain him gets a piece of the jersey or something and I don't know if we're going to be able to see it from this side well, right, there, right there you, you see it behind right there. Brent Warren that should be a clip and not a hold that should be a 15 yarder but it is 10 yards from the point of the infraction so it uh, turns it into a 15 up. yard or more penalty Skelpie catches the ball well out of bounds they would have had him for a loss anyhow the line of scrimmage had been the 16 and the penalty because it's from the point of the infraction and not from the line of scrimmage will push Fitchburg all the way back to the 40 yard line of Brockton to bring up second down 28. So for the, at least the second time today, Fitchburg hurts themselves with an untimely penalty. There's motion, motion again. again. Motion once again. Everybody but Bolak moved forward. Fitchburg might be too excited right here. Come on, Bird! I'll tell you one thing about Zach McCall. As you see him at the bottom of the screen. Loves taking I, you off I that I think he'd helmet. prefer playing without the helmet. Yeah, he's a showman. All Every right. opportunity he gets, he's got that Well, that's so people can take off. his picture. Watch uh, this. Bolak is not quite set. There they all go. The whole left side of that line just took off. Harris, Souza. Wrong color, boys. Wrong color. Fitchburg needs to settle down. They've pushed themselves back from They're the 16 all the way to the 45 now. They're hurting themselves because the big Mo is definitely with the Red Raiders. I'll tell you something, though, Steve. The officials marked off seven yards on that penalty. <laughs> the ball was inside the 40, That's and now right. it's outside the 45. Well, it was right inside the 40. I'd say five yards. That Bolak. should be intercepted. Semper with the interception. McCall will drag him down, and a penalty marker, three penalty markers go down after the tackle. Maybe a face mask here. I'm not sure what they're going to call because McCall was the only Fitchburg player around. It was thrown right at the it point of the tackle. It was maybe a sideline penalty. I'm not sure. We're going to have to wait and see this. Unless McCall grabbed the face mask, that was I, just a, a, a pass that shouldn't have been thrown. That's the case. It's a face mask. Yeah, it is. On Zach McCall. 
And Looking you hear the response of the Fitchburg crowd. Now watch this pass, no win if Troy Semper playing middle outfield here, center field. Looked like he was returning a punt. Now let's see if we can see the face mask. Oh there yeah, right oh there. very, very flagrant. Flagrant so penalty. He, ne he never took his hand off the face mask. Now the Fitchburg defensive coordinator really chewing one of the field judges' hand ears. Well, I can understand that the uh, fans disappointed with the call. They see the turnover and then they call, but had they had the opportunity to see that replay yeah. as we did, there'd be no question about it. That was a flagrant penalty. In fact, one representative from the Fitchburg media was just thrown off the sidelines. Apparently had some choice words for the oh, officials sure. himself. First down 10 from the 43. Semper with the easy interception as a dead ball foul. Now the referee. If these fans actually saw what happened, the cheer and the standing ovation for the official uh, for the Raiders. officials That's from the uh, Red Raider fans, but again, they did not see what was clearly a face mask penalty on Zach McCall. This is a five-yard penalty against the boxers, pushed them back to their 38. Well, they're entitled, I guess. I'm sure. sure I'm sure we, if I didn't have, it. I'm sure if I didn't have the monitor here to see the play up close, I'd be, I'd be with them too. Well, the other indication, of course, is that three different officials threw the flag. Yeah, when yeah. that happens, it's you likely know, that something went wrong. You know it happened. When one of them throws it on a play like that, there's some question. Yeah, but one, was, one person can make an yeah. error in judgment, but three yeah. at the same time must have seen something. And, he, and McCall didn't let go of the face mask. And, and, was, and, that, and of course, it's the thing. kind of penalty that's, that's called because it's so dangerous. Injury, yeah. So, first down 15 now for the boxers from the 38-yard line. Mosley in motion. Bourne, the ball carrier. Back to the original line of scrimmage and on his feet across midfield and close to first down yardage. Call that a gain of 13 yards. That's the first big run that Brockton's had since Mike Bourne ran for 43 yards in the first half. Ryan Bourne with Keenan on the stop, but Bourne in the big run. 10 runs, 86 yards, 8.6 average. We'll buy that. Nice play action handoff to Mike Bourne. 32 Keenan, you see coming into the screen, eventually makes the tackle. Nice Bourne second effort, Breaks though. away. And there's Keenan to make the stop. Second down, two from the Fitchburg 49. Right up the middle. And Belanger appears to have the first down. Brockton so far taking advantage of the turnover. And that's Absolutely. something that they had to do. It's well, a first down from the 46. Was, wasn't a great mark, but I guess it'll do the job. Well, now, now they're even. Yeah, frankly, though, I think it's a lot easier to, to make that mistake after a play from scrimmage yeah. than after a penalty. I yeah. mean, five yards is five yards. True. First down 10 at the 46 of Fitchburg. The boxers dodged a bullet as the Red Raiders got on the move. Somebody's off sides. Ryan Keenan lined up offsides. And that's another mistake. I, I can't understand how it, how it could happen. Keenan was well offsides. And the coaching staff is is very evident to that. Ray Cosenza is telling Ryan Keenan right now, you got to give six inches there, son. He was actually not even in the neutral zone. He was over the line. He was over Brent Warren. As, he, <laughs> as 32 <laughs> Keenan creeped up. Yeah. That's one be way to beat yards. Brent. <laughs> line, line up face to face to him. If we get it before the snap, you'll see. No, you no, won't see you it really in that can't. situation. You need the other. You need the field camera shot to get that. <laughs> again, again, the officials doing Brockton favors, marching off six yards in the penalty. That's the home field advantage. <laughs> Something. At any rate, they're at the 41-yard line with a first down five. Now we'll see. Now, Watch now Keenan see creeping Keenan. up. He's actually over the line yeah. at that point. Hey, any way you can get it, just don't get caught. All right, inside a minute to play in the third quarter now. The boxers need five yards for the first down. Belanger, who seems to never have any trouble getting a first down, regardless of his first down, third down, fourth down, whatever it might be. His legs are yards. like an eight-cylinder car. Just keep on driving and driving and driving. That's why he picks up those yards. He's caught 
He's the up back. He's got no blockers in front of him except for the line. But he hits it and just keeps on driving. He was caught at the line. You see that? Watch his legs now. They never stop until he's down. Good view as you see Salila, 75, trying to strip the ball away, but Belanger hangs on. Timeout called by Fitchburg, their second of the half. Brockton needs a touchdown here, Tim. Well, the boxers, as Steve said, taking advantage of the turnovers. Craig Bernard forcing the fumble recovery, uh, forcing the fumble, and then recovering it in the first quarter to set up the boxers' first score. And uh, here, the Semper interception has led to the boxers' best sustained offense of the day pushing down to the 34-yard line of Fitchburg. Take the opportunity then with the timeout on the field to uh, tell you a little bit more about the Brockton Pride Night, second annual coming up on November the 6th. That's a Friday night at Christo's 2. It's $20 a ticket, and an Italian buffet will be served. We told Best you that the, the PHS Jazz Band will be there under the direction of Vinnie McCrina, Dick Johnson, fine uh, musician himself, the uh, leader of the Artie Shaw Orchestra will be the guest soloist. The Psalms One Gospel Singers, the Haitian Dance Group, Grupo Bamba y Plena Dance Group. That'll, that'll uh, be performing as well. An Irish, some Irish song stylists, Alfie O'Shea and Lee's Units, and uh, some guitarists from Puerto Rico. So it'll not only be a Brockton Pride Night, but it'll be an international night celebrating Brockton's cultural diversity. All to take place at Christos 2, Friday, November the 6th, uh, for $20 a ticket, you can contact uh, the Boys and Girls Clubs of Brockton for more information, or you can purchase tickets at CM Petty Market, Stillman Sims Tire Company, at the Boys and Girls Club of Brockton, or at Preston's Market at 75 Main Street. So uh, we'll tell you more about that as the season goes on. Belanger into the open, and Gelpi gets him down inside the 15-yard line, saving a touchdown as Belanger gets the boxers pumped up. You know, I think Fitchburg was looking for the option play right there because half the white shirts were standing around watching outside while Belanger was already down by the end zone. I get the feeling that Lucian Belanger is finding out it's a lot of fun to carry the yeah, ball. Yeah, I think so. Look, he wasn't touched until he was way down. He ran by everyone. Gelpi saved a big time run. Wow. Here's a guy who did his work blocking and tackling for so long. They finally give him the ball, and he's having a grand time. Instinctively a good runner. First down 10, and he'll get it again at the 13-yard line. Picks up five to the eight. The Boxers continue to drive, continue to run time off the clock. This uh, will probably do it in the third quarter as we get down to the final 10 seconds. The interception by Semper and the ball carrying of Lucian Belanger combined with some penalties have helped the Boxers inside the 10 yard line of Fitchburg as we go to the final 11 minutes of play trying to tack on some insurance points. Stay with us for the final quarter right after this. doing just a little you're helping a lot it helps a lot from the church of jesus christ of latter-day saints it helps a lot the teams change ends and timothy we neglect to mention the second half we still have to pick a cape cod cafe mvp i've been i've been conferring with statistician Leo Genitasio. Gee, that's a nice... That's nice Ish bug, Gelpi. Huh? <laughs> that's Ish Gelpi. A little dirt in the face. On, sucking on the uh, mouthpiece. Yellow mouthpiece. You know, I've, I've been conferring with statistician Leo Genitasio, and we've narrowed it down to a few choices. You seem to agree, but we're, we won't... We won't reveal it till after the game. Well, a lot can happen in the final it quarter. Sure the can. boxers looking to score here to open up a little bit more comfortable lead. And uh, Brockton has made it difficult the last couple of weeks. Uh, it's been such a team effort that uh, uh, Mike Bourne had a big week last sure. week, over 100 yards rushing, but uh, Mike Landers seemed to stand out yeah. for us. Uh, it's uh, difficult to, uh, to do it this year when we don't have the one player who uh, is always 
leading the charge. So we've got some, some thoughts, but we'll see what happens here. Second down and six to go for the first down at the nine yard line of Fitchburg. Shaheen looking end zone. He's got Pina open and overthrows him. Perfectly planned play. Took Fitchburg by surprise. Ish Gelpi and Keenan had coverage, but Pina, if the ball was about a yard short, it would have had six points all over it. The big tight end was alone out there. And that'll bring up a third down and six. Bit of mix up in the truck on that one, but. So just four seconds tick off the clock in the fourth quarter. Plenty of time left for a lot of things to happen here. Jason Mosley calls the timeout. Now these one point games will produce a lot of timeouts, that's for sure. Armin Colombo going for number win, 198 at Brockton High School. Picked up his 250th career victory earlier in the season down at Plymouth. And uh, now looking for 198 here. So let's see if he were to get it today. Let's see, we got uh, Zavarian coming Go up. Against Lemonster, And I then believe. Lemonster would be the next opportunity. I'm sure, I'm sure that would be a little bit of sugar on top of it all to beat Lemonster for well, two. Actually, no, we'd have, we'd have one more in between. Uh, Durfee, I'm sorry. That's right, Durfee yeah. would be uh, down in Fall River two weeks from today would be his first opportunity should everything go right in the meantime. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Durfee <laughs> lost last night. I believe to Silver Lake or yeah. somebody like that. New Bedford, yeah, New, Bedford won. New Bedford defeated Silver Lake. Yeah, all right. And Durfee uh, lost to somebody, a powerhouse. <laughs> Boxers, of course, have yet to uh, take on one of their big three opponents. There are only two of them, so <laughs> it, it doesn't take long to get through that schedule. We will see Durfee in two weeks down at Fall River. And the, then we'll have Lemonster. Then the following week is a week off. Then I believe New Bedford and then Weymouth on Thanksgiving Day. End of the season already looming ahead. It seems like we've just gotten started. But still lots of football to be played here and on the road. Steve Peener, Pina rather, trying to excite the crowd. And this is a big play. Third down, six from the nine. Boxers really would like a touchdown here. Look for Mike Bourne here with a couple of big blocks up front by Belanger and Mosley. And a Bedford shutout Silver Lake last night. Durfee losing to Dartmouth. Oh, another powerhouse. So here we go. Third down and six. Oh, and stop. Mosley gets nowhere. May have lost a yard. Tom Wade with the big play. Got some help there also from George Bishop. We called his number 64 a couple of times today. It is a loss of a yard back to the 10 yard line and Mosley just met his match on that play. Bishop got the big wraps around him. Nice play. Fitchburg defense rising to the occasion. You know, I look at Brooke. Brock is in a no-lose situation here. They have him pinned in deep, but obviously you'd like to make a touchdown here. You're the defense champ. Fourth down seven from the 10. Mosley is open. Needs to get to the three, and he won't get there. Ridden out of bounds by Graham and Keenan at the six. But on the other hand, Fitchburg has 95 yards to drive now. That's all right, Brockton, that's all right. It does fire up the Fitchburg fans. They watched the turnover. They protested the penalty called on McCall. Nice play. And they saw the boxers march downfield, but the defense answers the call. Graham and Keenan, nice job. Stopping big Jason Mosley at the six. So 94 yards to go, to be exact, with 10 minutes plus on the clock. Lots of time for Fitchburg to get a drive going. Trailing by one. It's been a game reminiscent of last year, which ended at a 7 0 score up in Fitchburg. McCall starting from the end zone. Belios gets the straight arm, and Belanger comes in to finish him off. Gain of one. Semper also to help out. And McCall gets his shoulder pads pulled out from under the jersey. 
Nice pursuit. Pat Velios hesitated, then knew McCall was coming outside, had a direct pass to him. McCall loves that straight arm. Got it right into the face. Now watch Velios Belanger just come refuses on. to let go, and Belanger will made him pay for it. Take that back to the huddle. We'll call it a gain of one, second and nine at the seven. And the passing formation for the Red Raiders. Now they're giving Kelpie a lot of room there on the, on the right-hand side. An awful lot. But up the middle goes Williams, gets free, breaks the tackle, and Bernard drags him down from behind at the 13. They need to get to the 16, though, so it'll be third and three. Craig Bernard once again on the stop, but Bob Williams showing he can carry the ball, too. He's a good-sized kid. Once again, the uh, we've seen it a couple of times this year. The positioning of various players doesn't necessarily follow form. In this situation, you got 6'2", 210, Zach McCall as your running back, and your fullback <laughs> is 5'10", 190 pounds. So you can't judge a runner by his title. Third down two from the 13, the long two. Bolak faking the pitch. Mosley stays home and wraps him up. Craig Bernard, we mentioned that he must have the opposition's playbook. That is such unbelievable talent right there. Mosley back there, Bernard. Just a fantastic defensive play by Brock. And Bohack had nowhere to go. Bolak fiddled and diddled. And Mosley just kept those and, feet and, still. And ended up brittle. <laughs> so Williams on to punt from the goal line. Another good kick, and a near collision. Velios and Bourne both wanted the ball. It's Velios. Oh, he's racked up. He gets popped by, by Ryan Keenan yeah. at the 38-yard uh, line of Fitchburg. Good field position for the boxers after containing the Red Raiders inside their own 15-yard uh, line. And now the clock does become a factor. Seven minutes, 34 seconds to play. The boxers with the ball in Fitchburg territory, looking for a good sustained drive and some points at the end of it. Uh, well, destiny like in to, their own hands. Yeah, they'd like to take about six and a half, seven minutes off the clock here. Easier said than done, though. Fitchburg's up to the occasion. The defense has been there all day long when they needed it. Boxers unable to generate anything through the air. Belanger on the ground, a little more effective. Getting a hard fought five yards. Gelpi helping Fitch out on the tackle. Four Fitchburg shirts had to bring down number 35. Tim Cannon was the last to come up, helped out by Graham. He Williams. shot out of there, Tim. <laughs> Clock running, seven minutes to play. And a second and five. Boxers leading by one, seven to six. Bourne, first down, flag flies. As Bourne gets into the secondary, Shaheen was knocked flat. And Dan Reardon reacting, it's gonna be a holding call on the Boxers. And once again, a mock cheer from the Fitchburg fans. Let's see who we can pin it on here. I don't see anything right there. I don't see anything at all. I didn't see the penalty in our replay right there. Well, somewhere in the middle of the line, it was Dan Reardon who uh, well, he was the only the official. Yeah, on the he call. was around the official, but that doesn't mean he committed the, the penalty. So that'll push the boxers back to the 44 as the penalty took place right at the line of scrimmage. So that'll bring up second down and a long 15. No. And the boxers still with the two tight end formation. So they'll keep it on the ground more than likely. Mosley going in motion. Fumble, ball's loose, Fitchburg has it. 
Belanger got popped by number 75, John Salila. I don't know if Lucian ever had complete control of that, but another turnover. Tom Luke Wade. Costly. Tom Wade, 53 for Pittsburgh, comes up with it. So the game rests on Brockton's defense. Red Raiders take over at their own 47 yard line. Let's see what happens. Salila was just right in his face. Just cut Belanger right as he got the first step going and Wade is the beneficiary picking He's up the ball at the 47. Salila blew by Mike Gregory and Chris Floyd on the right side of that line. Boxers a quick change, Lander, uh, Lander's going up to the top of the screen to pick up Gallagher and Velio's coming near side. But it's McCall on the carry. Velios takes a tough block. And McCall banging heads with Jacques at the 46 of Brockton. Gain of eight on the play for the big man. Fitchburg playing as their crowd is very well. 90 yards on the ground on 21 carries now for Zach McCall. He's worked hard. They'll mark the ball at the 45 of Brockton. So it'll be second down and a long two. Feels like an earthquake here on this side of the bleachers. Some Pittsburgh foot stomping stopping. Pittsburgh fans. Gonna motivate this Red Raider offense, which has been effective in spurts. McCall getting some good blocking up front, getting the first down. Nice blocking up front, beautiful. Belanger on the stop, but not before Zach McCall picks up three more yards and the first down. The clock stops to move the chains with 6.03 to play. McCall using his peripheral vision to pick his hole. Although it wasn't big, he knew where he had to go for the first down and he did it. Psychos goes out, the extra defensive back coming in. That looked like a legal procedure. McCall hit and reaches out. A big long arm to the 37 yard line, but they'll mark him down at the 38. I'm telling you, Brockton should go for the strip against Zach McCall because he is carrying that like a loaf of bread. And if somebody goes after the, the hand that he carries it with, a, a fumble's sure to happen. Clock running, 5.15 to play, Fitchburg Getting deeper into Brockton territory. Now at the 38 yard line, second and six. And a whistle. Billy Devin wants a timeout. As Mike, the defense takes a timeout. Michael Bowen was running to the sideline. Billy Devin didn't want to chance it. Take a minute, talk it over. Pittsburgh fans, very excited. Now this has been a real defensive standoff the boxers scoring first just four minutes four minutes 20 seconds into the game it appeared that this was going to be a wild one on their second possession the big run by mike bourne setting up the shaheen dive for the score and fitzburg kept silent until the final four seconds of the first half when uh, consecutive passes to ish gelpi one for 40 yards to get them close and then one for 15 to get them in the point after was blocked, and that's the difference in this one. Seven to six, and Fitchburg on the move. On the prowl. Or, more fittingly for the Red Raiders, on the warpath. Well, if Fitchburg was to score here, and that's a big if, the odds have to be with them, because in Brockton's offense, it's a ball control offense. Their passing game has been virtually non-existent today. We haven't seen this kind of ineffectiveness from the box since opening Wagner, day against yeah. Wagner High School, and that was really a different offense. Yeah. Second and six at the 38. Long count for Bolak, and McCall wants to throw it for Gelpi. Pick! Pick hard, Jack gets a piece of it to knock it away from Gelpi. Gelpi had steps in the open. A little bit of razzle-dazzle. 
Actually, I think McCall actually threw that a little bit too hard. He's got a heck of an arm there. He does have a strong arm. Yeah, that was a perfect pass. In fact, he looked more fluent than Mike Bolak has today. <laughs> Watch McCall here. He's going to send it downfield. There's nice Gelpie coming right at you. And Picard Jack leaping out of nowhere. Yeah, that ball wouldn't have been that's caught a, anyhow. That's a fine defensive yeah, play, though. Yeah, very nice. Something that the defensive backs did not do effectively in the first half on that scoring drive for Fitchburg is just get the ball away from the receiver. Clock stopped, 4.57 to play. Third down, six, Gelpi in motion. Blitz, but McCall gets the ball and gets the first down. Zach McCall to the 26-yard line. Belanger blitz, but McCall was able to evade him. To evade him, big, big play for Fitchburg. Ran Good right move. by Mosley, too. Mike Landers and Picard Jacques ended up making the tackle. Big first down carry on third Abs and six. Absolutely. And the Red Raiders. Well, you know who's going to get the ball here. McCall. Can Brockton stop him? It's yet to be seen. Fitchburg content to let the clock run and pick up the yards that they need. They're 26 yards away. Williams gets the call, so a little surprise. Chris Psycho's got a hand in there. And that hand is hurting. Tripped up Williams in the backfield. Psycho grabbed that right hand, appears to be okay now. He has no intention of leaving that defensive lineup, I'll tell you that. No gain on the play. Clock inside of four minutes now. And they'll take the official timeout for Psychos. Because apparently he is having trouble with that hand. Can't tell if he's in pain or just doesn't want to come out. I'm sure it's a combination of both. Looking at the left hand now, and they'll check him out. The boxers would love to have their starting unit complete in this situation. I don't see anybody, I don't see anybody coming in. Now here comes Kenny Legault off the sidelines. Now they'll hold him back a, a moment. Last minute instructions from Bill Devin, and here comes Kenny. Now Chris wanted to come right back up, but you have to sit out a play if I'm That's correct. That's right. You have to, once the whistle is blown on an injury timeout, you must sit out for one snap of the ball. Let's see if they go right at Kenny Legault now. Well, Kenny's been out there before today. He's not cold. Second down, 10. The ball at the Brockton 26-yard line at Fitchburg, trailing by a point, looking for their first lead of the day. Ish Gelpi in motion. And Zach McCall running behind Williams. Gains five before Mike Landers stops him. Another big third down play coming up. They were third and six before the last first down carry by McCall, and now they'll have a second down, a third down five. At look, the at him, 21. look at him carry that ball out in the open. Carries Jason it Mosley. in the hand as opposed to in the arm against the body. Keeps it away from the body. And I suppose he's got very strong hands. He feels confident in uh, his ability to keep it out there. It's worked from this far. Don't change it now. Third down. They'll call it four. It's a long four, though. Two receivers to the left. And Zach McCall, flag we got down. A hold. We got a hold on Fitchburg. McCall, on right. close right to first side. down yardage, but the penalty marker went down, and this will probably come back. On the right side of that line, Salila and Ramon. Let's see if we can pick it up. I saw it right there. Somebody held Jason Mosley right there. I didn't pick a number, but Jason Mosley was held. Gutsy call from the referee. That's <laughs> some <laughs> angry fans. Uh, I think we're on the wrong side today, to say, Steve. To say the least. I'll be heading down to the sidelines after today's contest to speak with Brockton coach Armin Colombo. We're only 2.25 away. Clock is running. Big down, third and 13 for the Red Raiders.
Boxers again go to a pass defense. Larry Stroud in, Dan Reardon out. And a third down, 13 for Fitchburg. They need to get to the 16 yard line. They'll take a timeout. Do you go for a field goal here, Tim, if you make it in there? Do you with the wind? It all depends on what Joe McCarthy can do Yeah, with that foot of his. So down to the final, 2-11 to play. Pittsburgh trailing by a point. We will be selecting our Cape Cod Cafe MVP after this one. It's up for grabs. look in on Mike Bolak conferring with the Pittsburgh coaching staff. You know, as we hear some of the fans reacting to the officials, it's, it's typical. We've all done it as, as fans ourselves. But there was a, uh, I think it was Jim Tunney, the famous N NFL referee who uh, wants to find a fan as a guy who will yell at you for missing a, a marginal holding call on the center of the interior line from the 60th row of the bleachers, <laughs> and then after the game won't be able to find his car in the parking lot. <laughs> I like that one, Tim. I like that. Without binoculars, that is, too. Absolutely. We're all referees when we're up here. Oh, sure. Sideline, armchair referees. But I'll, I'll tell you this. I've, I've done my share of criticizing officials in all oh, kinds I've of been, sports over the years, but I wouldn't want no. their job. I've, I've been very rough on them. And so some calls are so easy to see, and they're under a lot of pressure, but, you know, they've done a fine job today on both sides of the ball. Biggest play of the game, third down 13 from the 29-yard line of Brockton. Zach McCall goes in motion, three receivers to the left of Mike Bolak. He drops back three steps, throws deep, and picked off by Landers. Who Mike Bolak was throwing to, I have no idea. Throwing to Torrance Graham, the tight no, end, who was five yards away Graham. from the ball. And once again, the defense coming up with the big turnover. Watch the play again. Nowhere near him, Landers again. These aren't difficult interceptions. He's right there. Graham's There's Graham coming in from behind, but a factor on that play, the presence of Brent Warren, Mike Bolak at five foot eight, drop back to pass, and six foot six, Brent Warren was right in his face, forced Bolak to throw the rainbow pass, and Landers comes down with it. Second interception, third turnover of the day, and it couldn't come at a better time for the boxer defense. Well, let's see how many timeouts Fitchburg has. I believe they used two or three so far. Bourne trying to get them out of a hole, stays on his feet out to the 14-yard line. And look at how he protects that. Oh, we're going to have a, a penalty, penalty on marker as McCall tangles with Pina downfield, and Zach McCall is going to get a frustration penalty, I think. Eh, just a little bit. Yeah. Hey, hey, he's taking six shots in a home game. He has the neutral flag. No Ray Casenza giving an earful. You know, you understand what Ray's saying, but we say every week, you gotta call a game like it's 0-0. Zero, zero. A referee should not be affected by the clock, and I know I criticize on it. The referee is making the right call. Shaheen keeps it, lunges ahead to the 33. Boxers with a second down from the 32-yard line. And Fitchburg takes another timeout with 1.36 to play. It's quiet over here now. The shame of this situation is it's been a well-played game, particularly by the defense on both sides. And yet, if the score remains the way it is, these Fitchburg fans will go home feeling as if they lost not to Brockton, but to the officials. They're convinced now that it's been an unevenly called game. And should the score remain seven to six, they'll be convinced that their Red Raiders could have put some more points on the board had they not been stopped on several occasions by the officials. As you look at Ray Casenza, one of the uh, officials now talking with Zach McCall out on the field about that last penalty. And uh, 
the Fitchburg faithful. Very disappointed with the way the flags have been thrown. But the score remains seven to six, and the boxers have the ball in the driver's seat, trying to hang on to a lead they've had since four minutes into the first quarter. I'm Tim Cox. Steve Valley has made his way down to the sidelines where he'll catch up with Coach Armand Colombo at the conclusion of this game, regardless of the outcome. A second down, seven at the 32. Mosley goes in motion and blocks now for Bourne. Mike Bourne, second effort to pick up the first down, and that's a big, big first down. Salila coming back to make the tackle, but Michael Bourne breaks the 100-yard mark with that carry. 12 carries now, 103 yards for Mike, and those were the biggest of the day for him as he picked up the first down to keep the drive alive. And the clock running at 124 to go. Fitchburg has just one timeout left by our count. They don't use it here. And the boxers can run the clock down as far as I can tell. Shaheen again keeping it on the ground, keeping it himself, playing it safe. And lunging ahead for a couple. Clock stopped now with 102, and Fitchburg takes its final timeout. Although the referee has not given the indication that this is the last timeout, we believe it is the fifth one. Boxers scoring early. They couldn't do anything on their first possession, receiving the opening kickoff and going three and out. They stopped Fitchburg on the fumble. Craig Bernard recovering and setting up the touchdown. Mike Shaheen going in from one yard out after Mike Bourne got them close on a 43-yard carry. And then Fitchburg finally got their offense in gear in the final minute of the first half, but the extra point attempt by Joe McCarthy was blocked. Still don't know who it was that got a piece of that. But uh, at this point, it's turned into the play of the game. As the half ended at 7-6, to six, and no one has been able to get in since. The boxers have gotten close, but were stopped on fourth down inside the 10-yard line. And Fitchburg, just moments ago, inside the Brockton 20 and driving. Mike Bolak's pass picked off by Mike Landers. The second interception and third turnover of the day for the Broxter defense. And now Shaheen can just down it. The clock will continue to run. The boxers will have to snap the ball one more time. But this one belongs to the boxers and they really had to work for this Shaheen can just down it on this snap and that will do it 25 seconds on the clock so the boxers will not have to snap the ball again and they hang on scoring early and then relying on their ever so tough defense to stop Fitchburg just one point short. And the countdown from the Brockton sidelines, the Boxers celebrate their fourth straight victory. Lucian Belanger leading a celebration in midfield as they knock off the previously undefeated Fitchburg Red Raiders from Central Massachusetts. One of the best teams around, one of the best ones the Boxers will see on this tough schedule for 1992. The defense did the job. The tough Fitchburg defense stopped the boxers on seven points. But it was enough today. Seven to six, our final score, as you see Zach McCall going through the line. He's a fine football player and has a bright future ahead. But this one belonged to the boxers as we uh, find it. Armin Colombo down at the center of the field. And Steve Alley's with him. Steve? Thank you, Timothy Armin. That was one heck of a game there. Great football game. Great, great defense on the part of both teams. We had what it took when it, when it really counted. I, I'm proud of the kids. You know, uh, five weeks ago, who thought? Four and one. 
Great, great ball game. And uh, just defensively, I think we said all along, this is the team that could do it. And uh, defensive had to do the day to uh, do the job today, and they did it. You know, o it. offensively, we've seen explosion there, 300 yard uh, on the ground. What happened? Was Fitchburg just that good defensively, or was it an off day for the offense? No, I think they played excellent defense. They crowded us. And uh, they did they, they did a good job of it. Maybe we could have taken better advantage of it. But uh, fact of the matter is, one point, thirty points, forty points doesn't make any difference. As long as you get the W. You know, we talked about pass defense last week. A little bit shaky there. Did did, yeah. did, did, did you make any adjustments after the no, close we didn't of the make first any half? Adjustments. We just more aggressively went after the ball. I think we were a little bit. You know, we, we saw the ball. We had them covered. And on both occasions, the kid made made good catches. Went after the ball and did a great job of catching the ball. And uh, that was, uh, you know, I, I, you can't fault the defense on that. I thought defensively we just played great, great football all day. And I just, you know, like I say, 4-1 and one at this particular point after the first ball game, I think I could have won a lot of money if I could have bet a lot of people. A lot of people were ready to sell us down the drain, I think. But uh, they should have known better. A lot of people like to see Brockton lose, but you're not one of them. Absolutely not. You're a happy Absolutely. guy right now. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thanks, right. Steve. Bye-bye, Armin. All right, Timothy, a very happy Brockton coach. We'll see if I can get Ray Cassenza, the Fitchburg coach. But right now, let's go back upstairs. Okay, Stephen. Uh, the boxer defense doing the job. They were unable to stop Zach McCall short of 100 yards, but I'm not sure who could do that. He carried the ball 25 times for 118 yards. But stopping a team led by Zach McCall on six points is an accomplishment. Uh, so the defense answering the call today, Craig Bernard with the fumble recovery and a couple of interceptions. Landers, uh, the last one, stopping Fitchburg's final drive and preserving the 7-6 score. We will wrap it up with our final numbers and tell you about our Cape Cod MVP in just a moment. Ah, too big. Too old. Over 14 million dogs and cats are killed each year just for being born into a world that doesn't want them. There are more kittens in the car. Friends of Animals Spay and Neuter Program makes you a big part of the solution for a fraction of the usual cost. All it takes is a phone call. Poor thing. Probably thinks he's going home. Spaying and neutering is more than just a good idea. It's a matter of life and death. your final numbers on this one not a lot of offense to show though the yardage not bad they're 233 for Fitchburg most of that coming of course from Zach McCall sure. 118 yards in the ground very impressive running back a little bit of bad blood in the globe yesterday he said Brockton who a couple of the Brockton players were saying that and but in the end everything turned out nice Lucian Belanger and Zach McCall the two two big stars of the respective teams were hand in hand with a couple of hugs turnovers the key here Brockton scores off a turnover. In the second half, it seemed the momentum went with whoever got the ball off of a turnover. Nice effort by both teams, though. Heck of a football game. And those Fitchburg fans might take note of the uh, penalties. Eight for yeah. 80 yards compared yeah. to two for 20 for their Fitchburg Red Raiders. But uh, a well-played defensive game. And for that reason, it may seem like a cop-out to some, but no, we think it was no. a well-deserved honor. Absolutely Our Cape Cod not. Cafe Most Valuable Players players the boxer this week, defense yes. we could have done this two or three times earlier in yeah, the season when yeah. the whole defense banded together we mentioned already how difficult it had been to single people out we can single out craig bernard for his fine play over the weeks could have particularly given it to today craig. pat, uh, pat Bellios, Bellios, yeah. mike landers uh, yeah. an interception today and uh the boxers overall have been a defensive they were, uh, they were powerhouse all season long i mean they they held a, a an explosive offense an explosive running back to six points in the and the six points was just a mental letdown for about a two-minute span at the end of the first half. When you hold a team like Fitchburg to six points, your, your, your defense is doing the job. And, and Armin Colombo came out and said it right there. Our offense didn't win this game. Our defense won it. Congratulations, guys. So the defense, the Cape Cod Cafe MVP, our total for the season from the Cape Cod Cafe Dollars for Points program, $380 now into the Brockton High School Athletic Fund. And thanks again for, to uh, Jim Jamulis for joining us today from the Cape Cod Cafe. Next week, the big showdown with number one Zavarian. The Hawks will host the boxers at Westwood. We'll be there. Hope you'll join us there as we bring in all the action. 
I'm Tim Cox for Steve Valley, our director, Matt Malone, and everybody in the crew. I want to thank you for joining us. And once again, our final score, Brockton 7 and Fitchburg 6.